In this video, we're going to be looking at similar solids. It's quite like similar shapes, but it includes areas and volumes also. Now, before we start looking at some questions, we're going to look at a few things you need to know. Now, what's going to be involved is scale factors for lengths, areas, and volumes. And you can interchange between the three, depending on what you know and what you need. So let's look at how we do that. So here I've got two ratio three, and this is my scale factor for the lengths. Now, how do I get the scale factor for the area? What I just do is square this, and squaring the two gives me four, and squaring the three gives me nine. So this scale factor now is for area. So for my length scale factor, I've managed to get the area scale factor. Now to get the volume scale factor, you look at the length scale factor and you cube it. So two cubed gives us eight and three cubed gives us 27. And this is the volume scale factor. And remember, we've got the volume scale factor from the length, not from the area. You cannot go from area to volume nor can you go from volume to area. We have to always go back to the lengths. And from lengths, we can get to area by squaring. And from lengths, we can get to volume by cubing. Sometimes you'll know the volume scale factor and you need the area one. How do you do that? You'd cube root it to go back to lengths. And then you'd square it to get to area. Let's have a look at an example. So here I've got the volume scale factor and I want to get the area scale factor. Now, how am I going to do that? I cannot go straight to area. I need to go back to lengths. We're always going to be going back to the length scale factor. Okay, so from lengths to volume, remember we cubed. So we need to do the opposite of cube, which is cube root. Now you should know the cube root of 27 is 3. And the cube root of 64, which you should know is 4. Because 4 times 4 times 4 is 64. And that gave us the length ratio but that's not what we wanted we wanted the area ratio but once we've got the length ratio we can get to the area ratio and how do we do that we square the length ratio so squaring 3 gives us 9 and squaring 4 gives us 16 so from the volume ratio we managed to get the area ratio in this example we've got the area ratio but I want the volume ratio so how do you do that? Now we can't go straight from area to volume. As I mentioned before, we need to get the length ratio first. Now from the area, how do you get the length ratio? Well, this is the reverse of how you get the length to area. You know, For length to area, you square it, so we're gonna square root. So square root in the 25 is five, and square root in the 36 is six, and that's our length ratio. Now, we can get our volume ratio. And remember from before, to get from length to volume, you need to cube. The cube of five is 125, and the cube of six is 216. Okay, so let's look at some questions then. Okay, so here we've got a question where we need to find the volume. And we know two lengths of A and B, and we only know the volume of B, which is 120. So since we know the lengths of both, we've got the length ratio, and that's 2 to 8. Before you start working with this ratio, you are allowed to cancel the ratio down. It does not change the ratio. It's just like a fraction. So this can be written as 1 to 4. And remember, this is the length ratio. So we can get the volume ratio. We just need to cube it as before. So cubing the 1, you get 1, and cubing the 4, you get 64. And this is our volume ratio. Okay, so what do we do with that 1 to 64? The 1 side is referring to the smaller shape, which is B. The 64 is referring to the bigger one, which is A. Now, we know the volume of B. It's 120. So we need to make that side with B into 120. Now, because it's 1 at the moment, it's really easy to do. 
you just multiply by 120. So multiply the 1 by 120 gives us 120. And 64 times 120 gives us 7,680. What it's saying is that if the volume of B is 120, which is in the question, the volume of A would be 7,680. And that's our answer. Now, part B is working surface area. It tells us the surface area of A is 10,000, but it wants us to work at the surface area of B. Now, we're going to have to get the area ratio. So in the question, it gave us the length ratio. So we're going to use that to get our area ratio. So the length ratio was 1 to 4 after it was simplified down. Now squaring it gives us our area ratio, which we can use on our surface area. So 1 squared is 1 and 4 squared is 16. And that's for area. Okay, so we're going to be using 1 to 16. And remember 1 is referring to the smaller shape, which is B. And 16 is referring to the bigger one, which is A. Okay, so we know the surface area of the bigger solid. It's 16. So we have 16 for A, but we need that to become 10,000. And what we can do is to make it 1 first by dividing both sides by 16. So 1 divided by 16 gives us 0 0.0625. And 16 divided by 16 gives us 1. So dividing both sides by 16 makes the A side 1. As it was, 16 is hard to make it to 10,000. But we made it to 1 first. And now we're going to make it to 10,000. So times both sides by 10,000. And it tells us that the surface area of B, which we're trying to work out, would be 6,250. Another thing to note is when we're looking at masses, it follows the same ratio as volume. So just when you're dealing with masses, just use the volume ratio. I hope you found that video useful. Support us by liking, subscribing, and share this with your friends. And if you still got some more questions on anything, drop a post on our forum at examqa.com where you'll find your questions answered.